When you've been a slave to fear and a slave to addiction, a slave to sin, a slave to just the ways of this world, just a slave to all this stuff, for you to come into a revelation of absolute unconditional love, it is a mind-bending thing, especially if you've got a Pharaoh filter. So you need to get rid of that Pharaoh filter. So it's difficult, very difficult. So now listen, we're going to look at Moses in Exodus chapter 34, 5 to 7, because this is the best thing that he ever did. Years and years and years of having face to face with God, he finally says to God, God, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself as you really are. I want you to tell me who you are. Now, here's a guy, I told you all that background to tell you, here's a guy interacting with God. Here's a guy who did stuff for God. And now he says, now lead my people on. He says, I don't want to go another step until I really know who you really are. You'd think by now, maybe he had a general idea, but he really didn't. He said, God, I want to have a real, genuine experience of who you are. So if you could have God tell you exactly who he is, instead of some preconceived idea or filter, God himself tell you who he is. Would you listen to him? Yea, I would say to you. No, just kidding. But really, here's what he says. God, I am a God. He says in these verses, God descended in the cloud and he took up his position there beside him and he called out the name God, God. He passed in front of him and he called out God, God, a God of mercy and grace, endlessly patient, so much love, so deeply true, loyal in love for a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion and sin. Still, he doesn't ignore sin. He holds sons and daughters and grandsons responsible for the father's sins to the third and even the the fourth generation. Well, that was more or less good, right? Well, let's look at this. Let's look what he says. Number one, he says he's merciful. Isn't that good news? God is merciful. That means he runs into your mess. If you got something messed up or something going on, God doesn't avoid you. God doesn't want you to struggle through that on your own. When you're in a mess, God runs into your mess. He values you and he does not accuse you. Do you understand what mercy is? Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. You know, so often we're in a place where we judge ourselves wrong or we may even judge ourselves correctly. But the wonderful revelation here is this. God is merciful. That's a really good thing when, when you goof up and you can't seem to get it right and you're struggling with things. It's really good to know that you can always approach God because here's the first revelation he wants you to have of himself. I will always run into your mess, not away from it. I will never reject you or accuse you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to embrace you. I'm here to equip you. I'm here to qualify you, not disqualify you. I will always manifest mercy to you. You should only expect mercy in a time of trial, difficulty, or even failure. I I am a God who runs into your mess. So don't avoid him when it gets messy. Don't avoid him when it gets difficult. Please bring your dirty laundry to the throne room. Only the blood of Jesus can get it all clean. All right. So second thing he says, second thing he says is he's gracious. And this is good because, I mean, mercy is wonderful, but he said he's gracious. Now, mercy is not getting what you deserve, but grace is getting what you don't deserve. So mercy is, well, I deserve this. Nope, I'm going to show you mercy. And then all of a sudden he gives you grace. Well, I don't deserve that. Doesn't matter. I'm going to give it to you. You know, when you feel like I don't deserve something, God, I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve, you know, equipping your ability, your strength. You're constantly there. I mean, you're always empowering me. You never, ever quit on me. I feel like I don't deserve that. He says, that's what it means to be gracious. You don't get what you deserve, but then on top of that, you get what you don't deserve. You get his favor. Well, I wouldn't favor me if I were you. Well, thank God you're not God. Because God is always on Team Carl. Always. He is always on my side. He'll never leave me or forsake me. He will never quit on me. Unconditional love means unconditional love. There's no place where he says, ah, well, that's it. I'm fed up with you. God is always gracious, and he will always empower you to excel. He's committed to my excellence. So good. Third thing, he said he is endlessly patient. Wow. He is endlessly patient. He used to sing a little song in Sunday school. It was, you know, only took him a day to build this and that and another day for that and another day for that. Only took him a day. He talks about all creation. Only took him a day to speak to all creation to become into manifestation. But he's still working on me. But he's still working on me. He's never, ever going to quit on me. 
doesn't matter how long it takes. He who began a good work in you, he's going to continue it, and he's going to bring it to a flourishing conclusion. How many on a journey with God? We all are, and it's all good, and he is endlessly patient, and he's never, ever going to give up or quit. I love this. Number four, it says, there's so much love, so much love. He is consistent, and listen, God is never moody. Last night, I had to be careful with Cheryl. She was in a bit of a mood. She had an experience that was challenging. It was a bit difficult, and I had to just walk softly. Even the dog had his tail down, his ears back on. (laughs) Something's not right in the house right now. I'm just going just gonna to behave myself. You can tell like, there's something weird going on. He didn't notice that Dylan was gone, but he noticed that mom is acting strange. But here's an amazing thing about God. God has so much love, but God is consistent in his love, and he's never moody. Like, I think sometimes things, well, God must be really ticked off today. You know, God is love, and it says, and there's no shadow of changing in him. No shadow. That word shadow, it, it comes from, the, you ever see the sundial? A sundial and the sundial, if the shadow moves one way or the other, you know it's morning or afternoon. But when there's no shadow, you know that the sun is at its peak, it's at its hottest point, it's at its most powerful point. And what God is saying is that I will always be at my most powerful point for you. I won't be a little less or a little more. I am always going to be consistent. I am full on in my love for you. You should expect, I love that song, we should expect love, love, and more love. You know what I love about that is, what I love about that is, you can always be yourself in the presence of God because he's not moody, he's not uptight. He, he, you know, he never goes, is he in a good mood today? How's how's he doing? Did you go in? How is he today? Can I go in? Because I really need some stuff. He is always in a good mood. He's always ready to receive you. He's always full of grace and full of mercy. Can I get an amen? amen? All right, number five. He's deeply true. I love that. He's deeply true. He's trustworthy. He never lies. When he says his word, he watches over his word to perform it. And whatever word he has spoken to you, it will never, ever fail. Never, ever, ever fail. He is deeply true. What he says, he means. And if your circumstances don't line up with God's word, your circumstances are an absolute lie. Insist on God's word to be your standard, and he will. Declare those things that are not as though they were, and he will bring, and he will align your whole world with his word, because his word never, ever, ever fails. All right, he's deeply true. Number six, he's forgiving. I love this. He says to a thousand generations, he removes your sin and he establishes you in peace. Amen. How many ever think that I must deserve this because I was bad? I was praying for somebody the other day. They said, well, you know, I used to drink and smoke and did a lot of crazy things when I was young. Well, who cares? You see, that's saying that there's some stuff that I did and therefore I deserve this. There's things I did, and I guess I'm now sowing, or I'm, you know, sowing what I've, or I'm reaping what I've sowed. So that's the way it is. If there's cause and effect, it's not the way it is in the kingdom. I had one that's right. It's not right. But you know what? If you believe that, you believe that. But it's not true. Because what did he say about your sin? What did he say about your failures? I remove it from you as far as the east is from the west. Well, how far is that? It is completely. It is never ending. It it means how far is the east from the west? They never run into each other, ever. I have removed it. It is forever separated from you. I will never treat you as your sins deserve. I have forgiven you. I've forgiven all your sin. You are absolutely free of that. That has no effect in your life or in your future. I don't ever want to hear a believer say that. It says in Isaiah, it says, I, it says, I've seen your willful ways, yet I will heal you. It doesn't say I've seen your willful ways. Now I'm going to hold you accountable for that. You know, you'll get to go to heaven, hallelujah, but you're going to have to pay the consequences of your disobedience. That is not biblical. It is not God. It's a misrepresentation of God, and we need to get rid of it. It's a filter that is hindering us from receiving the fullness of who he is. Does he forgive your sins or not? And he said he forgives all your sins. He heals all your diseases. Done. 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 That was a field goal right there. went right through the post. Oh, let's move on. You ready? He's just. Ah, yes, Pastor. See, but he did say he holds you responsible. Yes, but you do always have to see that there is a covenant, and there's two covenants, and that was old covenant, and that was before the cross. And you see, after the cross, he he held Jesus totally responsible for your failures. He is just. 
And somebody has to deal with all of the brokenness. Somebody has to take it. Somebody has to cover all this stuff. Jesus covered most of it. How much of it? What does that include? Everything? Every single thing. He does hold us responsible. But here's how he holds us responsible. Give me another slide. Give me another slide. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So here's how he holds you responsible. What are you going to do with Jesus? I've sent my son to forgive all your sins, to set you free and give you eternal life. What do you say? Here's your responsibility. You ready? It's your responsibility to say yes to Jesus or say, I'm going to go it on my own. That's it. That's all there is right there. What are you going to do about Jesus? Look at one more verse, John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one gets to heaven except through me. Let me read it again. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one gets to heaven except through me. Hello, can you read red writing? That's what we believe. That's what we, we've read that verse like that forever. Nobody gets to heaven except through Jesus. He is the way, the truth, the life. It doesn't say that. It says no one comes to the Father except through him. He is the way to the Father. He is the true representation of the Father. He is the very life of the Father. And it's not about heaven. It's about right now being reconciled with your heavenly Father. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Who cares about heaven and the sweet by and by? Right now, now, I get to experience a good, good father. Why have we messed it up so long and made it about the sweet by and by? You get to have an experience with your heavenly father right now. Isn't that good? All right, settle down. I know it's exciting. Ephesians 1 verse 7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of your ability to be nice. <laughs> the forgiveness of sins according to your ability to be pleasing to him and to obey him and honor him. The forgiveness of sins according to what? According to the riches of his grace. What is grace? You get it, you lucky beggar. He's going to give it to you. He's going to pour it upon you, and you do nothing to deserve it. He's going to pour the riches of his favor, his life, and his goodness all over you. Your sins are forgiven. They are. They are forgiven. And it's according to the riches of his grace. One more verse, Romans 8, 15. But you receive the spirit of adoption by which you now cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Now, I'll tell you, it's almost idolatrous to try to talk about the Father in 25 or 30 minutes. How can you take the one who is immutable, who transcends everything, who, who just... You know, there's no way of really searching out his fullness. It just continues. He's just transcendent above everything. How do you do that? And yet, what he has revealed about himself, we must know. And you need a totally unfiltered revelation of what a good God he is. There's so many things. Accepting what Jesus did on the cross removes the filter so you can know who he really is.